Teachers on a master's course at Cumbria University are engaged in their practitioner research. They've chosen to do this through video. When I was doing my PGC, I always enjoyed the academic writing and I felt that it improved my practice because it made me do it in a more focused way. So when I was then given the opportunity to carry on with the masters, I took that up. Okay, and then four times... The research is about whether getting these guys to write reflective journals at the end of each lesson can help them and me. So it's got an, ass an assessment for learning focus for them. But also it opens up a conversation between them and I about their learning so that I can keep a track of how they're feeling and how they're doing. So expand it and then simplify it. When I introduced it to the class, I said, this is the idea, we're going to do the journal entries. We might find that it bores you to death. We might find it's really useful. You know, so they knew all along that they were part of a research project. Is that good? And then minus it's times three. minus three would be minus three X, good. One or two, whose names I won't mention, just it was boring, it was boring, it was boring every lesson. But one or two are actually really, really honest and it's fantastic because it allows me to then reply in an honest way. So some of the honesty I found really surprising and, and pleasing. The project was based on focusing on assessment for learning um, and trying to improve my personal practice in that area. Um, I chose to focus on my year 10 groups because I have two parallel groups um, so I'm a, I am able to use the video in a different way with each group. Hello. Hello. The idea that I'm developing is to encourage pupils to reflect on their learning on a regular basis um, with the hope that it becomes a practiced skill rather than something they do infrequently um, and therefore not very deeply or effectively. And um, so at the end of each lesson, I encourage them to write a journal entry in their exercise book. Now you can write anything you like. You can write, this is the key rule I learned today that I'm going to forget. You know, you can write this, this. I actually tell them that when you start talking to me, I'm going to understand this. Okay, you can ask me a specific question, something you haven't understood. You can say, I was really lost today, I really struggled, it was horrendous. You can say, I think I'm just about there now, maybe you need to do a bit of practice on it. It's like literally anything. It's just your thoughts about the last hour. So it's like, what thinking you had, what happened, how did it go, what do I need to do from here to go forward? Okay, and that's all I want you to do, a sentence or two, reflecting on the lesson. And the idea is, I'll interview a few of you as we go along. It, we might find out that it's actually really helpful and that it gives you kind of a link from each lesson and it's a productive thing to do. We might find out it's a chore to you, okay? But it's about trying to find out how we can best get me to know exactly how you're doing and get you to know exactly how you're doing as well, okay? So if anybody's got any questions, feel free to ask away. If not, underneath your work today, I just want to write one or two sentences. Just think, just think for a minute about the last hour. Did you work as hard as you could? Okay, how did it go? What could you have done more? What do you think about it? Okay, but anything, anything goes, okay? I won't take any offence at all. So write whatever you think. First, I thought it was pretty pointless to be honest, because I thought, what is the point? It's just wasting lesson time. But then, actually, when you go back on it, you think it's probably good for you revising, because then you can look back at what you thought that you were good and what you weren't good at. Uh, did you find it easy or difficult to know what's right? Um, I find it easy now, but at first, I didn't really understand the entire idea. Have you done anything similar in other lessons? No, so it's really different. Do you think it is helping your learning in a short or long-term basis? Um, well, if I go on to use maths, then yeah, but if I don't, then probably not particularly, <laughs> so maybe it might do. Um, I'm not sure. It probably will be, but I don't know. <laughs> Is the journal improving your reflective skill? Uh, I'd, yeah, because then you practice more, so you've got more idea of 
and what to write and like assessing what you've done more accurately. At this point, can you think of a way to improve the use of journal in your lesson? Instead of just writing it down, uh, have like a class discussion. Um, not really. I think it's good when Miss Garn asks a few people's opinions. That's about it. The course tutor, Dr Pete Boyd, discusses the value of the research so far. I wasn't sure whether um, your work was about assessment for learning or was it about uh, learning to learn and are they the same thing? I mean, did you look at one particular literature or the other or did you...? Not, I mean, not necessarily. Originally it was assessment for learning because the master's assignment I did last year, I wrote a short piece on assessment for learning. So I read, you know, all of your Black and William and all of your standard text on assessment for learning. But I, I could say it's worked on assessment for learning, yes, but it's also worked on learning to learn as well because, as you saw in the video, initially I was very open with them and I said, just write whatever you want. But what I realised is as I went on, they need a tiny bit more guidance on different ways you can reflect. So one lesson I might say, OK, tell me what was difficult about today's lesson. Another lesson I might say, OK, so tell me overall how are you feeling about that topic? And that's part of them, them learning to learn and me learning how yeah. to teach them to do this reflecting process. But again, it's all very intertwined and it is quite difficult to separate out the threads. Joe, what do you think about the self-assessment thing? Do you recognise that from from the maths department? Yeah, so uh, I think when you come to a certain stage in teaching, you, you maybe don't reflect as much as you would do at the start of teaching. Uh, I, I know that I, last year, was uh, a case of, from the lesson, I'd get the kids to number the lesson, and that was always a bit vague. Uh, but actually reflecting in words and, and asking specific questions about where they were struggling to the teacher, that's obviously, uh, the teacher's gonna get a lot more out of it. And from there, the teacher can refine their teaching, whereas a number, it's, it's very vague, so I think it's a great idea. We had some conversations about how you would adapt this reflecting idea to different classes, because it won't work as well with different ability groups. So, I mean, even within my group, you know, I've got some kids that just didn't engage with it at all. You know, just told me that, you know, the person next to them stabbed them with a pen, you know, and all that kind of thing. And, and you know, some of them either don't do it at all, don't do it well, or write something irrelevant. So you've got that problem within the class I used, but also, like, if you've got lower ability pupils who, are, who have less literacy skills, they're simply not going to be able to do what I was asking my classes to do in the video. So we were talking, weren't we, about giving them some sentences to choose from. Okay. Do you see what I mean? Or sort of providing different structures and different supports for them so that they're doing the same process and they're still learning to reflect. Mm. But, you know, it needs to be thought about carefully before you transfer it to new groups. The journal helps because you can look back with your revision and see wh where you struggled most and it's easier to revise because you can think well I've struggled in that part. We've started like showing our partners what we've been saying and it's nice to see that you're not the only one that doesn't understand something. Doing this journal thing it, it makes your relationship with the teacher a lot stronger and it makes you feel more comfortable talking to her about problems and stuff and plus seeing as everyone else do you can like relate to them if you have the same problems and you can help each other solve them out. So yeah, I wish we did it in other lessons because it really helps. If you're going to use this strategy, you have to be prepared to okay. take on board or to read the honest comments of your students. You know, so we had one in the video, you know, this lesson was okay, but some of it needs to be explained better. <laughs> like as a teacher, you have to sit there and, you know, be able to take that on the chin and getting used to that did take a bit of doing. So I did have to sort of say, ow. But then when I thought about it, I thought, yeah, she's right, actually. You know, I did stumble a bit on that topic or, you know, I could have done better there. Looking at those comments, I think that's at the heart of this study, exactly. actually. And the way in which you look at those, for example, one of the things we talked about is what, what was the focus of the comment? You know, what was it about? Yeah. Um, the second thing is, how did you respond? Was it a personal response where you perhaps dealt with that pupil in the book? or perhaps came over to them in a lesson later, you know, to what extent did it affect the personalisation of your teaching? And then there's the other one, which is to what extent did it affect your general approach? In their comments, there are definitely two types. There are emotional responses, 
and there are mathematical responses. Sometimes you'd get a bit of both in the same journal entry, mm. but you know, from some kids, they would say, I'm feeling really stuck, I'm really worried about such and such. But then you had some comments that were mathematical, like the one I was saying, I don't understand the negatives, or I understand the expanding, but I can't quite do the factorising yet. So I would respond quite differently depending on whether, you know what I mean, there was an emotional side to it or whether there was a mathematical side. And there were definitely those two sides. I think it's great, the improved dialogue, because if, if you ask a class, right, what questions do you get stuck on? And obviously, immediately, the students are under pressure and there'll be many students out there that are reluctant to put their hand up and say, what was this question? You'll get the odd few that they will ask. But in that case, for the quieter students, they might, OK, just jot down their reflections and the teacher uh, can adjust their teaching accordingly. Mm. Yeah. I do like that, the idea that you said before in your practice you might do that at the end of unit test. Well, in a way, it's a bit late, you know. Exactly. I've, got, I've got to the end of the unit, I've just blobbed on my algebra, yeah. and uh, then you tell me all the things I should have done on my algebra, whereas this is more uh, formative, it's more yeah. happening along the way, you know. Exactly. So that was exactly the thought process behind it, you know. So they're both examples of student voice, um, you know, which can be... There's a lot of talk about student voice and a lot about the way schools are trying to access student voice and this is right there at street level isn't it right down there in the classroom level we all felt a sense of freedom being able to go to the classroom and just film in our own opinion with no teachers around so we get our point across without like worrying what miss garn's gonna feel about it at first when we were doing the videos we were all messing about a bit and then um we started to take it seriously and i realized that it's not actually a thing to joke about it's just something to help you. Yeah, it's been really good. I hope we do more in the future. What do you feel about the reliability of the data, you know, in terms of, um, say, the written comments in their books and also the comments on the video? Um, with those particular pupils, I was a bit wary before the interview that they, and in fact, this is true of their written comments, actually, of them writing to try and please me. And if I could show you the offcuts from the interview footage, there was a lot of it that I cut out for that reason. You know, there was one girl who answered the first four questions, yes, because Miss Garn explained it well, yes, because Miss Garn was clear, yes, because Miss Garn helped me. And I kind of watched it and thought, oh, it's so frustrating because I can't use that, you know, because immediately, as She'll you say... She'll go far in corporate life, <laughs> though, won't she? <laughs> but immediately, you know, I know that she's, you know, she's not... Being, giving me her totally honest opinion. But I was fortunate that some of the kids were more honest and though that was the footage that I used in the video. I think also the data is more reliable if one corroborates the other. You know, so I can look at the video footage and then I can get those particular pupils' books out. And if what they're saying in the video matches what's in the journal, then I'm onto something a bit more reliable. You, you gain a lot from seeing how someone is responding, you know. And I think for something like this, where we've been saying, you know, there's all the problems of the emotional side of it and the mathematical side of it and the assessment for learning versus the learning to learn. And I think the fact that the video gives you that kind of personal perspective was for me really, really useful. I, I just worry sometimes about the quantity of data you've got actually. So I, I think perhaps mm -hmm. analyzing that data is challenging enough and uh, certainly time for you to uh, write a paper Definitely. rather than collect more data. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Definitely, that's very true.